Well, I think it all comes down to love. Um, people love themselves too much and don't love the people next to them enough. And we, we, I mean, look, we, we all love ourselves so much. It's sickening. Testing one, two, one, two. This is too loud, though. This is too yeah, you don't know where Peter is my alter ego for my manly alter ego. I am talking. <laughs> oh, lady, look at that. Okay, what do you want me to say? Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you. You'd think I knew about these things. This is a place I can express myself, and uh, um, I make clothes, and I, I'm a painter also. I just create this environment that I feel safe inside, and, and also for others to come in. Um, I want to create an environment to, to have, to to give a uh, wonderful experience to anyone that walks in. Um, a, place, uh, a place to make memories. So this is my new piece that I'm working on. It's an experiment and it's actually, it's looking pretty good. Um, so it is a dress or a coat, not so sure yet. Um, well, I think I create because I want to survive. It's my only survival tool I have to create. Otherwise, I can just kill myself like yeah. tomorrow. And also, you know, I, I always welcome ideas from people. And so. And it's great to, ha to, to have this shop where people come in and out and they always have something to say, you know? And uh, so there's always something to keep on. But most of it is thrown to the garbage. But there's always some, something to keep. Well, art is the pillar of civilization. So that's pretty important. Next question. Uh, freedom of expression. That's how we define style. Um, a way to also uh, create our own identity. Um, and uh, style never go out of, never go goes out of style, which is cool. Fashion, on the other hand, is something that um, always goes out of style. Art raises the deepest fundamental questions that could threaten their power. And, and those people want to dumb us down. In this business, I also have to make something coherent uh, as far as a collection goes. So that's one side of the business I'm working on because I need to sell the work. But in a studio, I like to play. Art is a, is a tool of uh, revolution. It's a tool of change. So it's threatening. Art is always threatening. I, I just have to please myself. I have to have fun. I have to remain playful. Um, and I have to allow myself to be creative and not just to produce uh, because I don't enjoy that so much. I've, I would define, well, I, I'm a French woman and I think I would define revolution uh, get, getting out and be ready to die. Oh. I also do illustration that represents my son, you know, and I know, it's so sweet, right? It is sweet. 
Yeah, so sweet. Um, I, I, I really uh, don't limit myself, you know. I like to change medium to be able to go back to another medium so I don't get bored. I, I, I try to keep it fresh every day. Um, well, you know, I've been thinking myself about this question. I've been asking this question for a while ago. And I always thought, uh, before, even, before Trump was elected, I always thought Americans are not ready to die because they're not aware of of what's happening. But it comes to a point that people are pushed to the, to, 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 to the wall and they're gonna revolt and they're gonna become violent. And then I think the revolution is happening through act of violence. You know, people have no food, they, they have no money, they have no shelter, they have no home. Uh, what are they gonna do? They're not going to die, resign. The they, they human nature is to survive. Just as the school day was ending, the shooting started. This cell phone video captured the gunfire and the screams of the high school students trapped inside their classrooms. Well, it's horrible. It's heartbreaking. It's, it's, um, I wonder who's the victims anymore. I, I'm not sure if the victims are the kids being shot or the the kids shooting. It, it's pretty mind-blowing that, that kids can get mm, assault weapons at the supermarket. Um, and then you have those people in Washington who are like, defend that. It, it's the world, when you, you tell me like, uh, the first, when you ask me this first question, what, what don't you understand about the uh, status quo maybe? Well, that, I don't understand that. I, but then yet I do understand those people are ready to, to, um, to uh, sacrifice a whole generation um, just for greed and profit. I mean, look, the kids, all those kids are coming out to protest. It's a big deal. And I think finally those kids are out and they're going to change. If, if anything's changed, it's going to start with them. So right now, in the, name, in, the name, in the name of 17 people, you cannot ask the NRA to keep their money out of your campaign? I think in the name of 17 people, I can pledge to you that I will support any law that will prevent a killer like this No, but I'm talking getting NRA money. No, no, because... Don't those people have children? Grandchildren? Like, that's something I don't quite get. Don't they have wives and... And uh, I mean, they are at risk as much as anybody else, their children, you know. So what does it take? Their kids to be killed? And therefore, you have every right to ask that question of me, and I'm here to okay, tell I'll you that I again. will stand for the things. Are you going to be accepting money from the NRA I, in the future? I, I've always supported, I will always accept the help of anyone who agrees with my agenda. Yeah, we, we love our, the representation of ourselves too much. I think people, there's so much sickness, so much loneliness. Um, it's, there's a big lack of love. 